Hot today, South Africa. Okay, so look, I was a. Uh, I have a research group in Dubai. It doesn't matter, but you know, so it also here. Sometimes a lot of young people, not a lot, but young people come and talk to me. Well, I talk to them more. Somehow we talk to each other. We're in the middle of a high election season. In other words, next, uh, next month, May, May 8th, something like that, yeah, is going to be uh, election time in South Africa. you will elect a new, you know, a new party to a new president, whatever, or something. So anyway, so one of the guys talking, you get this all the time, you have the same thing and the same thing. I said, I'm not into politics. I, I'm, I'm not going to vote. You know what I mean? Okay, fine, you know. Then we talk back and back and forth. Anyway, let me just cut to the point. It ends up that he had he hadn't registered to vote anyway, so he couldn't vote next month anyway because he hasn't registered to vote. You know, you, you register like a, maybe six months in advance or something like that. I forget when it is, but but so he put plenty of time, so he didn't register because he's not interested in politics. Hmm. Interesting. So one of the things I tried to explain to him, I said, look, it doesn't. If you don't want to vote, that's one thing, but not to register. I mean, unless you hide out from the government or something like that, which a lot of people are, um, then it doesn't make any. I mean, maybe not the best thing to do. And the way I explain it, you know, excuse me, take a little bit, drink my mango juice, mango juice and a chalice. Okay, it's not a chalice, but I think like it's a chalice. Mm. So it's like this. Suppose you had. I'm trying to figure out a way to to demonstrate this. You know, Let me just pull anything here. Let me pull it in. Let's say you have two buildings. <laughs> a little building here. Make this a little building. Smaller building? Nah. Building like that. Ah, whatever. Say you have two buildings. One's a high rise. Let's make let's make like this a really high rise. Like say a, I don't know, a New York high rise. 32 stories. <laughs> no, I was not messing up. Let's say in this building you have uh, a thousand people, a thousand uh, thousand eligible voters who do, may or may not have registered. In this smaller building, you know, say you have, uh, you know, say you have 300. You know, say you have 300 people that could be registered. Now, let's go back and look at the registered. Now, the politician, whoever is canvassing, whatever, they're looking for you, you know, what's going on in this neighborhood. So in one building, they have uh, a potential of a thousand, say, uh, voters, but they find out uh, maybe out of the thousand voters, only uh, or potential voters, only 200 are registered. Okay? In this building, say for instance, you know, there's only 200 registered in this building. Say in this building here, who, you know, say the building only holds 500 people, say like that, this is 1,000, this is 500. So here, say for instance, out of the 500 people who are registered to vote, right, or who are, who are eligible to vote, only say, uh, say 400 are, 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 are registered. Now you can spend your time going here, you know, with the with the 300, or here with the with the with the 400, it's not gonna make much difference because you have so many other people, and when you're canvassing, you meet other people, whatever have whatever have you, and that's good there. Okay, great. So this 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 building is registered with three uh, with um uh, with, with 400 people. This building is registered with with 300 people. You got it? Okay. Let's go to another neighborhood where people are whatever they are, or or, or different neighborhoods. Let's say in this building you have maybe 500 people who could vote, but only 100 are registered to vote. Here you have, say for instance, again a thousand people that are eligible to vote, but here you have 700 people who are registered to vote. Now whether the, the 100 people here vote or not, whether the 700 people vote, have nothing to do with it. You, you, if you're going to spend your time, you know, you're going to spend your time trying to get the registered voters to vote for your candidate. Here you're going to get your time, spend your time to get, you know, to vote for your candidate. But you see, when things are all said and done, even as the, the election is done and everything like that, people are still going to be looking at this community because they have more potential voters than this community. So this community here, you know, they might not even go on canvas next time because maybe, you know, they say this, the return is not much. Even out of the hundred people that, that were registered to vote, you know, only uh, or, or that or that um, came out to vote, you know, they didn't do as much good, whatever. So. The trick is not, you know, you see all these people say, you know, people died for you to, to, to vote or whatever. No, they died for you to be, uh, to, to be, uh, to be empowered to vote. To, I don't like that word, empower. They, they registered so that, that you could be a potential voter. Now, whether you exercise that franchise or not, that's on you, you know? Okay. 
So here's the way the thing is. I think in this particular time, you know, if you haven't been registered, you, you, because the primaries are starting to come up, but in some, some states, like I know from, I was voting in New York for a long time. In New York state, for instance, you, know, you got to register like a year earlier. And, and what, there was 96, 1983, when I was working with Jesse Jackson kind of thing, we went into way beyond a year before the, uh, the primary was going to come to New York. But, um, we went and uh, canvassed the neighborhood and got tried to get his name on the, on the, on the, on the register on the ballot, whatever have you. And by the time, and then a year goes by, and then people, then when he comes to town, whatever, when, and, and the election comes, you know, you're supposed to go to your, your primary voters because you have to, you have to, um, well, to register as a Democrat at that particular point, you know. Um, but when you come to, to vote, you find out, well, well, but I thought that I'm, I'm a citizen so I can vote. No, no, you have to be registered. This time, you know, the, the, the parties give you all these stipulations. No, you have to be a registered. You have to be a citizen to register to vote. Or, okay, fine. No, but you have to be registered in the Democratic Party. A lot of people didn't do that. So when they wanted, to, so when the primary came around, they thought they could register for, they could vote for Jesse Jackson for the primary. They found out they couldn't vote. They were they were crushed. They were heartbroken, tears in their eyes. Now registered. Registered in a, in, a, in a primary or to take part in a primary is different than the general election. The general election, of course, you you, could, you know you, you again you have to register for register to vote in your in your wherever you are. But you know that's a general election. Anybody you can vote anything you want in the general election. You get that booth view, you vote anything you want. But the primaries was what we're in right now. What we're trying to influence right now, at least ADA was trying to influence right now, is for these candidates to start talking about things. To, to, and by talking about these things, it'll excite the people to go to primary and vote. This is a, a, a crucial step here in the primary process because you can get a gauge of what people are thinking about, what people are coming out to vote for. And these are what's called your die-hard troops, the people that's going to work for you. You see? Okay. So that's the that's the, the the long and the short of it. You should you need to register in whatever if if your area is heavily Republican, for instance, and you want to do the Republican primary, which is not, then it's fine. If your area is heavily Democrat and you want to um, um, take part in the Democrat prize, you got to register right now at this early age, at the early uh, date. Okay, so now you got that done. Now, since you registered everything down, you might be interested in a, in a primary price. You might have some issues. Where now you should check out the landscape. So what you should do is start going to some kind of you know gatherings or meetings and see what they're doing. You don't have to say anything. Just stand there, you know, take little notes, whatever have you. Oh, oh, that's my congressman. I didn't know what he looked like. Oh, he's oh, okay. I see he's surrounded by oh, this is people that work with him. Wow, he did no money in that. They look like me. Well, how is the my congressman? Don't have anybody. My I'll just take his those kind of questions. You can get answered by going to particular participating in this early process. I would even suggest that if you have a candidate that you want to work for, just to see how inner workings are, then work for that candidate. Just go to whatever their local thing is and say, look, I'd like to canvass for the candidate, what I'm, you know, I believe in them, whatever. And then, you know, then as you work and you meet other people, you start talking politics, you start talking your issues, da 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 da. You can maybe get a chance to meet the candidate and talk to the candidate, whatever it is. But and then when something happens, you're there and you can you, you see so you have an inside look. And to have an inside look gives you a different kind of knowledge. And plus remember this is not just book knowledge or knowledge that you're getting off of the um, or for the TV, or you know how you, however they do, or even over your, over the internet, which is a lot better than TV these days, because you have a lot of people with opinions that you can. Whatever. But instead of getting that, you can get you can get that information. Plus, you can also here we go get it straight from the horse's mouth because you're working with the campaign. You see, one of the things I was telling the guy was that I said, look, man, you know I don't. It's like this. Uh, I asked. I said, well, you left-handed, right? He said he's left-handed. I said, great. I said, my brother was left-handed. Left -handed. When I grew up, I was going like, man, my brother's left-handed. I'm right-handed. But how, you know, I would be great if I could be left and right-handed. You know, you ambidextrous. So think of voting like ambidextrous. You know, you can you can vote, but you can do these other things too. You, the voting doesn't stop you from doing the other. Doesn't stop you from using your other hand. So vote with your hand that you don't use. You know, whatever it is, and you can still. You see what I'm saying? You, I know it's sort of convoluted right now because that's the way I talk. But the point is, get involved now, really now. Don't wait until some late date when you're going to start crying because, oh, I didn't get what I want. Oh, I they don't understand me. And then start talking bad about the candidate, but you don't even know the candidate because you never even interface with his, with his um, campaign, you know? And also, I'm sorry, one more thing I have to say this. A lot of these community meetings, like when they when they do rezoning or whatever they do, you should go to those things. One time, um, it was, um, it, was it must have been in a, in the early, in the 90s, maybe even you know, in the 90s, I was, uh, uh, there was a meeting in Harlem about, they were, they were doing something, some sort of building in Harlem, not building, but they were doing something in Harlem. So I went to the meeting, I just hung out because I wanted to, you know, and um, there was not many people there, like five or six, six, six of us there, you know, 
kind of interesting. But they laid out everything that's happening in Harlem now. You have Harlem like white now, basically. That was all laid out then. This is before, in fact, this was before Bill Clinton had had come to Harlem, which really sealed it. But, you know, but, you know Charlie Rankin and them, those are the ones that got Harlem to be changed. If you want to know why Harlem is so white now, it's because those plans were made like 15 whatever years ago. You know, and they just started to move on it. They just development, that development, whatever have you. And when that happens, that's it. You know, it's too late. So if you don't get involved right now, 15 years from now, you're gonna say, well, how did that happen? Well, they started 15 years ago. So start your work now, so that start your work for your children, for your like idios is a generational movement. This is not gonna happen right away. So start doing your generational work right now. That's the that's the that's the point. A point for me, T from the Pattersons. Making a really good mango juice. From the Patterson, the Patterson projects right there, you know, T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from ADES, this desk here, of the ADOS, you know, uh, American descendants of chattel slavery. Mm. Mm. I should say this. I should say this. Look, I'm no official of the of the of the movement. I'm just a, I'm, I just have this little desk. That's all I have. I'm just yapping now. Don't worry. Come around July, something like that. I get back to the states. I'm gonna follow somebody's campaign. I give you a hint. It's probably be Tulsi because you know she's the only one that's anti-war as far as I know or know how to handle the generals. But that's not the point. But I'm gonna get involved because I want to see what's going on. You see, and I might be able to you know influence. So might you. Think about it.